Okay, I'm live. Verified. I'm just going to share this if I can. Yeah, share button. Okay, I'm live. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, um, I'll be back in just one jiffy everybody. I've just got to swap some filament over before it's too late. That would be tragic. If my print died. It's a frog extruder, Teresa, not a frog. It's a... Uh, I thought that squashing frogs was, was a good word for, um, for a frog extruder. Video title. Go so James! Um, and if you want to ask questions in the chat there about your printer, I can do my best at answering them as well. Um, and same with you, Teresa, if you've got any questions. I won't hurt the froggies, don't worry. Alright, back in two seconds. Alrighty, that's loaded. That's done. Alrighty, so I've got some bits here from a few different um, different kits, and I'm going to put it all together as a extruder. So I'll be fumbling around looking for things. I'm sure. Just have to um, put up with that. Okay, so there is instructions, which I'm probably not going to look at a lot. And we've got our special Space Age throat from Mellow Store, which is made out of aerospace materials. And the standard throat is actually a pretty decent one, but I'm not going to use that. That'll just go in my, my kit of stuff. That's a bi-metal heat break. Um, so we're looking at a piece of titanium that is, I believe, and I'm not sure, I believe that it has a thread on it and it's screwed into the copper. But I'm not sure about that, so don't quote me. But it doesn't seem to have the potential issues that, at least at this end of it, at the hot end, that the other type have. Um, let me just go and dig through my box of shit. Okay, so here's my box of shit. See that? Okay, in here I've got a throat. Okay, 
that's one of them. Yeah, I don't know whether the camera is going to catch that or not, but you can see there the silver lining of the uh, of the of the copper and on the inside. There's a silver ring, and down inside there you can see it too. That seems to be just a press fit where they've got a piece of stainless steel tube and knocked it into there while it was probably hot, and it's made it tight and hard to pull out, etc. But when it gets hot, it seems to fail. So I'm not impressed with that system. Here's why. Uh, it just, oops, come on camera, hold steady Sam. That has slipped down, it's obviously mutilated from trying to remove it from the heater block. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's leaked and just gone everywhere and it just turned to shit. Uh, filament's still stuck in there. So that's uh, what I don't like about those. Um, your standard heat brakes are just basically just turned out of a single piece of, um, in this case, titanium. Uh, so it's just a, a single piece which don't leak, so they're pretty good. But they can still be a bit of a bugger to get your nozzle and heater block facing the right direction while you're um, while you're trying to get everything lined up. Like you're putting your heater block on and tightening your nozzle into it and trying to hold the, the heater block steady so it doesn't rotate while you're trying to tighten the nozzle in and you don't want to stuff around get it all the wrong V height and blah 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 blah. So that's a little problem that they have. And I'm going to put this goodie in there because it's not a bad one but it is not my aerospace materials one. So um, hopefully you guys can see my head. I don't know whether that's any good or not. You're sort of looking over the top of my phone. I wonder if it's going to stuff the phone up if I do that. Turn my screen off. Everything seems to still be working. Okay, I better read the chat. Alrighty, don't hurt the froggies. Gonna happen here. Yeah, just putting my extruder together. Um, all right, Teresa, I'll catch you soon if you're still here. Yes, I got the bird air. Oh, you can see my bird air in the box. Yep, that's that's the the next thing on the on the list of things to organise. I don't know what printer I'm going to put that on. I'd like to put it on my T-Rex, but there's only one of them, so I might not. I don't know whether that there's no upside down with that, is there? I don't think that that has an upside down. It appears to be symmetrical. I'm going to hope it is. They did give me a little tube of, um, of goop. So that's a, um, a thermal paste. I'll squeeze him down to one end. So I'm going to slather some of that on my thread. And this is only on the cold side of the thread. I don't know whether this particular goop would even handle going up to the higher temps on the other end, so I'm not going to risk it. It probably won't handle it. So there's my heatsink paste. Probably put too much on. I've never used this shit before. Uh, making you go. Go in there. Alrighty, so that's going to go into here, and then I'll just do my best at cleaning that up. Now they do give me a little spanner. This is very, very cute. Look how cute the spanner is. It's a little tiny one! Alrighty, so I'm assuming that's going to grip onto one of these. No, it doesn't. Okay, that's the bigger one. Alrighty, yep, that's that. I'll screw it in by hand first. Then I'll give him a bit of a wipe. Packing foam. Is that a good Titan? Now, to my knowledge, this only really has to be as tight as I can probably do it with my fingers holding on to that because this is basically going to glue it in and there's really not really much going to happen that's going to twist that. I don't really reckon I can get a much better grip on it than I have without putting any dents and damage on the um, on the aluminium there. I have a pretty strong grip and I reckon that's done it. 
So that's been tightened in. I don't, I don't know if I've been pointing my hands very well, sorry, everybody. So that's done. Give a bit more of a buff. <coughs> a little packing foam comes in handy for buffing things. Just to make that all nice and clean. Okay, so that should be well and truly thermally attached to that. Now, I will use a copper volcano block. So this is going to add a bit of weight, but you get that. Oh, the pricks haven't added any, um, sorry, I shouldn't say that, that's not very nice, is it? They haven't given me a heater cartridge or thermistor. They're assuming I've got my own. So, that means I've got to go find one. Well, I found a thermistor. Now I'm going to find a thermistor. Come on, that was a terrible joke. I have a box, and in that box I have components. I can't find the box. Aha, uh -huh, I know where it is. It's at home. That's poor form, isn't it? And I'm not going to be able to get that in there without it. Um, hmm, food for thought. Anyway, so I'll pick out my nozzle and I'll just have to loosely screw that in there for now. And we'll deal with that later. Uh, what nozzle am I going to use? I will use a steel nozzle. And I think I'm going to use a 0.6 mil nozzle. So I've got a hardened steel 0.6 mil nozzle. And that should go in there nicely. Okay, so there's plenty of room to tighten that down so I don't have to worry about the um, the nozzle not meeting the uh, the heat break, so that's good. 
See if this goes in there nicely. That no, Mr. will fit nicely. I just misaligned it, so I'll pop him out and do that again. It's usually a good idea to align things properly. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure that's got room so that the two wires can fold straight outwards without getting snagged on each other. It's not going in easily. the edge of the allen key to carefully push that in. So that's going to mean that the, um, I'll just move it so you can see it. So those two wires are coming out parallel there, so when I bend that down they're not crisscrossing each other. Because if this sheath slides up and they touch each other, you're going to get a bad reading. Uh, likewise with your heater cartridge, if the wiring slides up and touches each other, it's going to arc out. So, not cool. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, why, they, why they didn't give me a, um, a heater cartridge, I do not know. But you get that on the big jobs. Alrighty, so they have given us some screws in the box. Whack them in. Two of them. Sorry, I know that my camera is not very well aligned. Oh shit, I just dropped the grub screw. That's not good news. They're not easy to find. Oh, there he is. Alrighty, we're good. in there. So yeah, look, these aren't the best machined heat blocks that I've got, but they look good enough to do the job, and I don't think that makes much difference. Nice little grub screw. Yeah, I really am needing to very consciously push my hands out onto that camera. I need a longer bit of wood up the top there where I've got it mounted. I'm not doing that thermostrap too tight. You don't want to crush the guts out of it. <coughs> and I've realised where my um, where my heater block is too, by the way. Uh, sorry, my heater cartridge. It is at home because I did up a printer at home. And, oh, hold on. Aha! I just remembered, I think I brought all that stuff back. Sorry, I'm just rummaging around in my boxes of junk. It's not really very entertaining, is it? I'll stop. I'll be a good boy and stop. Alrighty, um, let's get that back onto. Where is he? Oh no, I've lost it. In my mess. Here we go. It's in my box. Yeah, where could that one be? I know it's 
somewhere. It's a big box. It's quite big. Success! I found it. I knew I would find it. I didn't actually. But I'll say I did. Okay, 24 volt, 50 watt, that'll have to do. Okay, so we now have everything we need. Oh crap. Okay, well this is where the, um, this is where the spanner comes in handy. So there is a little flat spot on this that you can use to get it out. Very handy. And maybe I do need to just put this in the clamp off here. So we'll pop him in his little clampy and then you can't complain and he won't come loose. If I can use this clamping mechanism instead of my fingers, I might get a better result. Hold on a second. Ah, yes, it needs to go in further. That makes sense. Well, hang on then. Hang on then. That goes in that far. Why does that stick up so much? Let's undo this. <clears throat> That's an issue. No good if that has to be tight, loosened off for it to go in. Okay, maybe it didn't have to be loosened off. It was just a bit snappy. Nope. How the bloody hell is that meant to work? If that can't screw all the way in and then slide in, this is fucking useless. Yep. Okay, so clearly somebody didn't think this design through very well. Uh, this metal won't fit in there so you can't do any kind of quick releasing at all this is ridiculous so the idea I'll try and show you is that this can go in and out without fucking around and this is too long now I will compare to be fair the original one that they provided me with which sticks up just as far so that isn't going to make any difference. So I have to grind this down flush. And luckily my type actually has Bowden tube going up into that, whereas their type is uh, solid metal all the way up. So that's gonna be to an advantage because I can then put some Bowden tube in there to, to do that little bit there. But the whole idea, so if you're watching this manufacturers, the whole fucking idea of this is surely so that you can do a quick replacement and you can't because you can't push it in without fucking taking this out so not happy Jan not happy that does not please me so what I'm gonna have to do by the looks of it is basically take to this with a file and file that down. I'm not going to use my good heat break. I'm going to use theirs and I'm going to grind theirs down. But see, the thing is with that, 
is then, then there's going to be a gap. Well, actually, no, there won't be because it'll be flush. If it's getting in the way, then it's going to be flush with it. So that shouldn't be really a big trouble. All right, I'll grind my good brand new super duper 25 fucking dollar heat break down because some clown at the uh, design department fucked up. Okay, uh, I have a belt sander, I have a vice, and I have a file. Um, I will use the file. And I'm just going to use the top of this um, as something to hold it flush up against. So, I don't know if you guys will be able to see me on that camera. But I'm going to go over to there and I'm going to do some file. Got a plastic draw device. Yeah. No one in the chat has any uh, suggestions to stop, so <laughs> I'm going to go ahead. Okay, so now I've got him flush. I'm just going to give it a bit more of a um, more of a tighten. Oh, look at that! That's how it should be. It just slips in and out. See that? That's quick release. That's what we bought it for. That's why we paid money. Now the inside of that's a bit of a burr, so I'm just going to give that a bit of a clean up the file. I'm just going to give that a little bit of clean up on the inside there because there's some dags which we don't like. Nobody likes a dag. <laughs> now the last thing you want is metal filings in your nozzle. So we're just going to make sure that we don't have any of those. So I think we're pretty good there.
So I'm not so sure about this aerospace tech. We'll see how it goes. I do suspect potential issues with it um, coming out and just basically doing the same thing some of the cheaper um, bimetal heat brakes have done. That is a possibility that I am thinking is um, quite a, a good one. <sighs> okay, that is done. Okay, tighten that up one more time. I'm just going to pop it in the vise, in the plastic jawed vise. Righto, so that's about as tight as it can get. Okay, after all that, I believe we've finally made some progress. So now, in theory, once we get out, sorry, oops. Let's get our heater cartridge in before we go much further. So you can see what I'm talking about here. If the um, if the cable is inserted that way and then you bend the wire that way, the two wires are physically wanting to cross over. If we turn it that way and bend them over, we've got less chance of that happening. So that's what we're going to do. Make sure it's facing like that because there's a little cutout, if I can just turn that, there's a little cutout of the metal block that gives it a little bit of room for those cables. The last thing we want to do is have an electrical short. So let's get those tightened up. If you go back and forth between the two bolts, instead of trying to tighten one of them all the way up, they actually work together a bit better and close things down a bit tighter. So we definitely want this one nice and tight. It's a nice big flat smooth surface area that should not crush the um, heater cartridge like the thermistor can because that's a grub screw hitting it directly on the side. Tighten that up nicely. Get that very tight. The last thing we want is that to pop out. And they should be able to bend down out of the way. And sometimes what I do is get a rubber band and put it around there or a bit of masking tape just while I'm working on it so they're out of the way. And it stops them from bending back and forward, which is the last thing you want. How many last things do you want? I think I just said something's the last thing you want, didn't I? So that's going to just keep all that out of the way while we are working on it. Okay. Okay, so now that's going to have to be heated up and hot tightened to get the nozzle tight into the heat brake. But as far as the rest of it goes, that should be all pretty good. Now, what I think is the beauty about this system is that this is able to pivot on this part, which means that when I get my heater block and nozzle tightened together, I shouldn't have any trouble aligning this and making it face the right direction so that the fans aren't going to crash into it when I'm using the printer. Okay, now I've just got to put a little bit of Teflon tube in there, and I'm not going to use anything fancy. I'm going to use a little piece of cheapest chips Teflon tube. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to get in there with the file and actually just ream that out just a little bit at this end. 
because we want it to go in easily. We don't want there to be any kind of closure over that hole. Likewise with the uh, metal fragments, you don't want to get Teflon fragments in your nozzle because they will block it. <laughs> you just want to make sure that the filament doesn't have an edge to get caught on and then you're feeding it in. <laughs> now that's ironically a really good length for this. goes straight in there and it seems to be pretty much flush with that bit. Ah, it's going to get snagged a little bit so we'll have to actually get the old uh, razor and just slice him off flush at the top. Yeah, it's still got a slightly tapered edge on it so that should be good. So yeah, if the, if the guys at the factory are watching, maybe provide a heat break that's got a slightly shorter length on it, or um, maybe a washer. I bet there's a washer in here that I haven't found. Maybe there is. No, I don't see one. No, no washer. Okay, now I'll put the clamp back in. Now, it is a shame that this isn't accessible from the front because if it was, it would be a lot easier to change that out. We'll hopefully be able to get to it from the rear once it's into its um, housing. Okay, there we go. Now, that seems to be nice and solid. And I'll just loosen that a little bit so we can face him in an appropriate direction. Uh, I think we're probably going to want that to stick outwards just so that we've got good access to that. Okay, so in theory, that should all guide in nicely. You'll probably take the tape off soon, but I'll leave it on there for now. There's no need. Let's get the fan on there and the uh, the mounting bracket. Now that's something I need to figure out: is how the bloody hell this mounting bracket mounts on to an end of three. Ah, sideways. Okay, so that's good. So these holes here mount it to the um, to the frame of the printer, I'm guessing. I don't know whether I've got an M3 plate handy to line that up with, but I believe that will bolt on to whatever. So I think we're pretty good there. Then we've just got to undo these guys. Let's get the motor out. Now, I hope... I hope that this cog on the motor shaft, yeah, it's long enough. Good, good. Because that would be bad if it wasn't. So one would hope that this is all going to go together nicely. And again with the off camera, I'm sorry. It's like, yeah, here, let's watch a four hour video of Sam's Toolbox. Okay, so hopefully that 
isn't an issue. I don't think it will be. But there is a limited amount of movement when it's in this bracket. Let's get this fans on. Okay, so this will be good. I will be able to do the, the quick change because, in, like I was saying before, I wish that this bracket was on the front, but it's actually going to be on the side. So access will be quite easy to that, which is nice. That's what we want to see. So hopefully this is enough cooling for this little fella. If it's not, I'll just have to make some kind of a duct and a um, and put a bigger fan on it. We shall see. It all just depends on how well the heat dissipates, I guess. And this aerospace material might also save the day. We'll see about that. So I believe this will be a good extruder for TPU. Very short distance between the nozzle and the extruder. It's always good for TPU. Okay, that's that. Okay, so there's no plugs on that fan. It's just a cable, which is fine. I'll just uh, rubber band it to the other cable for now. Since we're already doing the rubber band thing. Heard some audio. Alright, sorry about that. Alrighty, um, hopefully that's going to be back to good again. Sorry about everything um, dying on us there, people. Um, the old phone died. So where are we? We've got that all together. That's what I was about to show you. This isn't flush. Look at this. It bumps into that bit. So if you're ever going to mount this flat on something, you're going to need spaces. So we might have to um, get Ivan to make us some spaces. 
but we'll live with that. That's all right. It's probably going to clear on the end of three, which this plate is apparently designed for. Um, but there's also like four holes there as well, which is interesting. So that might also fit on some other carriage, which is cool. All in all, I do like it. Not happy about a few little things, a few um, a few things that could be improved, but on the whole, pretty good. Lots of screws in the box. I don't know what they're all for. Not all of them make sense. Why is there two different lengths of those little skinny fuckers? That doesn't make sense. This is almost going to be useless, this little fan. I'm going to put it on anyway, just because there's a bracket for it. I don't know why they didn't use bigger fans. It doesn't make sense. I reckon I'll end up just making a mount that uses this bracket to hold a blower fan, a big decent blower fan. This is like a tiny little baby fan that they've got on here. And I'm working off camera again. I'll do my best. I think I need a beer after all this. I have to go around the corner to Bread and Brewery. Get myself a squealer. Okay, so that goes on there. Yep, it's a bit puny. Who knows, it might be a super duper fan. Super duper powerful. I don't know what ducting you're meant to use to point that at your nozzle that you want. But there it is. Now there was some, um, I think there was some STL files that I can download. Alright, that seems to all go together. Um, I might as well put the spring and the, the hoo-ha on there. Interesting, the, um, the spring is quite long. I'm only going to have room for one washer on that. Normally I like to put one on both ends of the um, spring, but there isn't room for it on this one. So I'll only have room for one. They're like a Teflon-y kind of a washer. They're just meant so that the spring doesn't scrape on the metal, really, ultimately. That's better. That goes in. So that's basically just your spring tensioner, so you don't get too little or too much tension on the old lever. And we're pretty much good. I'll take this tape off. Look at that. Beautiful. Terrible lighting. There's a bit of weight to it. It's not the lightest extruder I've ever held in my hand. It's not the heaviest either. I'll tell you what's fucking annoying. There's no way to get to that little cog. 
to be able to turn it by hand. So you've got no access to the white cog that normally on a BMG style extruder, you would be able to grab and wind by hand. So there is zero way to hand feed the filament. I'm not impressed about that. Um, that would have been nice. I don't know how they could have provided that with the way that they've got it all mounted, but that's going to be extremely annoying. Um, what they could have done, if they thought it through, is they could have extended the motor shaft at the back and put a knob on it. That would have been very nice, but they did not do that. Um, I don't know whether that's something that they could do. I don't see why they couldn't, but they didn't. Um, there we go, and I'll just grab a, a socky wocky and hope they fit. They're for a different brand of Volcano block, so I'm not going to be too surprised if it's different. Not oh, beautiful. Look at that. Happy days. Alrighty, I've just got to figure out what printer I'm going to put that on now. But I'm a happy camper. Alrighty, tidy up my toolbox. Cool. Alrighty. So, um, so James, your printer, eh? What are you going to do about it, mate? That sounds like fucking drama. I guess you're going to have to get out the old set square and loosen it off and square up the posts and... Um, yeah, I mean, it's not so much that it's going to print wonky, although it will. Like a, a rectangle would be a, a rhombus or whatever it is, a trapezium. Rhombus. Yeah, rhombus. Um, you'd be pretty, you'd be doing pretty well to get a trapezium to print. Um, but yeah, the that's going to be a bit of a bummer. Um, and it sounds like Ken's had trouble with his when he moves it, so you might want to figure out where you actually want it to be when you do the build, and then not move the bastard. I'd be tempted to super glue, super glue it while I was bolting it if it's going to be that janky. Um, but yeah, probably don't do that. Don't listen to me when I talk about using super glue. It's probably a bad idea. All right, I'm going to pop these blocks in the socks just to keep it all together. So I don't lose any bits. Um, but yeah, if you want to if you want to organise a video call sometime, James, I can try and make myself available. I'm pretty flat stick for the next couple of weeks, um, but you might be able to find a time that just happens to work. I'm trying to get through a whole bunch of work before I move house. I'm going to point the camera down. Now. Do, 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 do. So yeah, I've got a, I've got a quite a good little collection of odds and ends now. It's getting better all the time. Well, these lazy buggers have put the bolts in for you so that you don't have to do it yourself. They think we're paying them or something. Well, I mean, you know, we're not paying them, so I guess I can't blame them for um, for doing that. That didn't make any sense. It's time for beer. I'm getting delirious. It is stinking hot in this here shed. Alrighty, just get them in there. Get your booty on. Yeah, so they fit these blocks pretty well. No issues there. thing with these um, block socks is that they don't handle being taken on and taken off very well once they've been cooked. They get a bit stiff and um, shit. Now, yeah, hang on. I'm just trying to figure out which is the best box to put this all in. I guess they can go in there. That's fine. You guys can live in there together. Um, 
keys, we don't need all of the Allen keys. I do have a bolt box somewhere, but I might keep these little guys in here. You never know when you're going to be somewhere without your bolt box. Special little mini spanner. Don't need my other spanners. I don't know which one of these heater blocks this um, sock's meant for, so I'll just figure that out. Probably that one, I guess. So we've got a bunch of 0.4 mil nozzles, I think. 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, 0 0.4. My little 0.4 jar is full. What am I going to do? I guess I'll just chuck them straight in the box. Okay, 10 can go in there. Alrighty, I think we're all packed up. Well, when I say all packed up, everything's still a bombshell. too bad. Could have been worse. Could have been easier. Sorry about the technical issues. I'm going to cut the stream off and have a beer skis. Um, if anyone wants to say goodbye, then now's your last chance. So I'm about to bolt. Um, what else is news? Alrighty. See you later, guys.